In the area of medical device design, it's increasingly recognised that human factors is an extremely important input to ensuring that a medical device is safe in operation and minimises the likelihood of harm to patients. The FDA is the major regulatory body that regulates the safety of medical devices and there's increasing emphasis from the FDA with regard to ensuring that use error, which is the maloperation of medical devices that could potentially cause harm to people, is minimised by ensuring that the design of the device has been thoroughly investigated prior to its actual use. The tools and techniques that we've developed in Human Reliability Associates are extremely well suited for providing inputs to the design process as the design progresses to refine how the device will be operated and to ensure that right from the beginning we're thinking about potential failures and how to eliminate them. The methodologies that we have can also be applied at the later stage of the design to analyze specific errors that might occur and how these could be designed out before the device is released to the public. In this example, I'm going to show how the Human Factors Risk Manager software tool can be used to uh, analyze human error in the use of medical devices. And I'll try to illustrate how the tool can be applied both during the design process and during the analysis of an existing medical device. So the way this analysis works is we use a process called hierarchical task analysis and you can see on the screen at the moment we have an overall activity which is to carry out a patient sample analysis with this particular medical device. So we set the goal out and then we set out what the preconditions are. In this case the precondition is that there is a patient sample available. We then define what are the subtasks required to actually carry out this, this operation using the device. And then we also have to put in a plan. The plan describes how the individual subtasks are carried out based upon the conditions that are present when the device is used. So in this example, if you're using this tool for development purposes, we could actually begin by setting out the overall objective of the medical device, and we could then break down that objective into a series of separate functions that have to be carried out by the user. So those functions could, as, I, as you can see here, prepare for sample analysis, mix the sample, and so on. So in this form of analysis, we functionally break down the various activities that are required to operate the device. You can see a little cross here. That means there's more detail at another level about what you have to do. In this case, we see that uh, to prepare the prepare for sample analysis, we do steps one and two. If a, a non-type X syringe is used, we do three. If the sample is in a safety X syringe with a safety X cap, then we do four. So this, this, the plan directs us to the different steps depending on the conditions. The other thing to say is that as part of the analysis, we define who uses the device. Now, medical medical devices, they're used by a single person. But it's quite feasible that in, with more complex devices, different people carry out different operations. So this is why we have a method here for entering the agents or the person, which are the people who actually use the device. So as you can see, we can analyze the task. And as the design proceeds, we can put more and more detail into the analysis of how the device is going to be used. The other thing to say is that we're interested in what different activity types are involved in using the design. So here you can see that some activities, which are colored yellow here, are actually actions. Other activities in this pink color are selection activities. Uh, other activities like verifying and checking are checking activities. Each of these different acti activities could fail in a different way. So that's the second part of the analysis, which I'll describe in a moment. But if we have an existing device, we would perform a similar analysis of breaking down the use of the device into a series of subtasks which eventually describe the whole, everything that needs to be done to operate the device. Well, whilst we're doing that, we can record the details of the analysis in, in a table here. You can see that every time we, we modify the information here, for example, if I added an, another box to this box, that would be reproduced as a new box. If I take that box away, 
uh, you can see that that box just disappears. So this gives us a very flexible way of collecting information from existing users or for gradually developing the design structure as we go along. But the most important thing is, is the analysis of potential use errors. So the risk analysis is the second part of the process which I'd like to describe now. So for a moment I'll just remove the, the table and we'll, we'll focus on the, on the steps themselves. So if we felt, for example, lifting the handle into a syringe position, if you made a mistake in that area, that would have a significant consequence. We could start to analyse the potential mistakes. So uh, there's a number of techniques we have available for, for doing that, but let's say that we think this step has a particularly significant uh, outcome. So what we would do then is say, okay, this is an action, what type of action could happen here? So we might uh, omit to do this action. So if the action was omitted, uh, that information would then be entered into the table here. If I, go, if I reproduce the table again, and I go to that particular step, which is step 3.2, we can see that we said that for step 3.2, the activity type is an action, and the action could be omitted. That's we've, so we've chosen from a, a list of significant failure modes, which is the same as this list here. But the question is, what would be the consequence if that action was omitted? Well, the, you might say the, the error description would be the failure to lift syringe to correct position. Now if that particular error has a serious consequence, for example that the analysis is incorrect. So what type of analysis is this? Well this could be a patient harm type of error as opposed to economic consequences. And we might say what are the existing risk control measures recovery measures to prevent this happening. Well the only risk control measures are training and uh, instructions for use, IFUs. You might say well what sort of performance influencing factors are there? Performance influencing factors are factors in the context of use that could have an impact upon that error. So maybe, uh, and these are outside the design of the device but they're still significant. If I say for example distractions so if we think that our device is going to be used in a distracting environment, we would want to make sure that there is a risk reduction measure uh, introduced here. So, so what we would say is that, that in, the, in the instructions for use, we, would, we might say that this, this is a critical step, and therefore we want to make sure that there are no distractions when it's being carried out. So, so this will be in a checklist. And we might want to insert a warning there also. So, okay, so like this is a critical step would be a warning. So that's just the example of the type of risk analysis that we can that we can do with this. And since it's critical, we can go into the risk tab here, and we can say, yeah, this is this is a high likelihood of error and a high consequence. So that we should that then label that up as a something that we need to take seriously. Now it's become red as you'll see. So we've described the operation of the device in a very systematic way. We've specified an errors that can arise as a result of operating the device. We've also, by the way, inserted some photographs of the device because we want those to appear in the procedure. So we've now carried out a risk analysis which is captured in this risk assessment document. If we now create a procedure from that risk analysis or an IFU from that risk analysis or a training regime, this can be done automatically by this process. And so you'll then see that when that's been done, the software automatically opens a Word version of the new procedure. So here is the overall subtask that has to be carried out. Here are, and here are the separate, here is the description of these uh, subtasks and warnings which are Im embedded in the, in, in the text. Here are some photographs uh, which have been embedded in the procedure and these are taken from the files that we've captured during the analysis process and you'll see that this new step that we've just inserted there saying this is a critical step is also captured. So the procedure tells you a description of the step, who carries it out, any comments which will, will have been carried across from the analysis and if there's any illustrations that will also have been carried across from the analysis. 
and also if there's any warnings, they, they will be carried across. So we can see we have a very comprehensive process here, which can be used both during the development process, working with potential users, and it can be used retrospectively to analyze the risks of use error and mitigate those risks by means of appropriate design solutions or appropriate IFUs. Thank you very much. Thank you.